I'm so sick of proud Christians I could spit. I mean, I could just spit. If I hear one more person go, well, in my opinion, I want to go, you know what? I don't stink and want your opinion. I could give two hoots about your opinion. Let me tell you whose opinion I want to live my life by. It's Jesus. One of my best friends, her name is Eva Whittington Self, and when she was 17 years old, she was hit by a hit-and-run driver, and it ran her car off a bridge where it flipped into a ravine, and her spine was severed between L4 and L5, rendering her uh, paraplegic for the rest of her life. And I love Eva Whittington Self with all my heart. Like Chris, she is family to me. I love her. And I'm telling you, sometimes when I travel with Eva or I socialize with Eva, I mean, I get close to being arrested because people are just, can be so foolish and so ignorant when somebody's legs don't work. And we went to a church recently and I I walked in behind Eva and then because there was a ramp, I pushed her. She's very independent, but I pushed her because the ramp was steep. And a woman came up to us and she said, I really feel like God has told me to pray for you because if I pray for you, you'll be healed. And Eva gets this all the time. And she said, ma'am, I know Jesus can heal me physically if he wanted to. But I've been in this chair for 35 years now. And I've grown to see this chair as God's grace to me. Because apart from this chair, I wouldn't have met my husband. I wouldn't have had my two daughters. And so I totally believe God could heal my legs if he chose to. However, I'll tell you what I'd prefer for you to pray for me. My patience is actually a bigger deal than my paralysis. And I've been being kind of short-tempered with my two daughters and my husband lately. So I would love for you to pray for me and lay hands on me, but I'd really appreciate you praying about the posture of my heart rather than the movement of my legs. And y'all, this woman got hot. This woman went, (gasps) and she said, well, I believe if you had enough faith, you could get out of that chair and walk. So if I prayed for you, you'd be able to walk. But I guess you don't want to get well. And I thought, lady, you better back that bus up because I'm going to cut you. I'm going to cut you. And I was like, I'm so sure she doesn't want to get well. I'm so sure she doesn't want to stand up and hold Andrew. I'm so sure when Abby and and, and Audrey were born that she didn't want to run down the room to their, their, their baby rooms whenever they cried out. I'm so sure. But my friend who knows Jesus is like, you know what, he's got this. He orders the steps of my life. He orders where I roll. If he wants to heal me, he'll heal me. But even if he doesn't, yet will I praise him. Made me so mad that that woman had the audacity to say, don't you want to get well? And yet the first time I started studying this encounter of Jesus, he says almost the exact same thing. There's a guy at the sheep pool, and that's where Jews went in the first century to be healed. Rumor had it that the very finger of Jehovah stirred the waters in that sheep pool. So they believed if I go to the sheep pool and the water is stirred, it was actually stirred by the finger of God but through the medium of underground springs. And so when the water rippled, they believed if I get in that water when it stirs, I'll be healed. I'll be healed of leprosy or I'll be healed of of blindness or I'll be healed of paralysis. Well, for 38 years, do we have any 38-year-olds in here? I mean, that's a whole lot of life, isn't it? 38 years, almost four decades, this guy has asked somebody to either pick him up or throw them over the back of their donkey and take him to the sheep pool whereby he would crawl to the edge of a bunch of sick people in the hopes of being made well. And here comes Jesus, our Redeemer, and he sees this paralytic who's been there for 38 years, and Jesus asks what at first 
glance may seem to be an unkind or a less than compassionate question. Do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? And I'd pose that same question to y'all today. Do you want to get well? Do you actually want to get better? Do you actually want to be freer? Do you actually want to have more joy, more hope, more peace? Do you want to get well? I don't know what the man's expression was in his countenance, but what he verbalized to Jesus was, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I'm going down, another steps before me. In other words, somebody cuts in front of me. Somebody cuts me off. Jesus said to him, get up, take up your bed, and walk. What this story illustrates is the necessity of neediness among God's people. It is necessary for us in humility to say, I can't make it by myself. Apart from you, Jesus, I'm not a propel woman. I mean, apart from you, I can't do anything good. I'm desperate for you. I can't get to the water by myself. I can't heal myself. I can't do it myself. Most of us in an event like this have good orthodoxy. I bet you half of you could quote a whole lot more verses than we could. You have good orthodoxy, what you know to be true of who God is, what you've memorized theologically about this book. But y'all, our orthopraxy, how we live our lives, has got to flow out of our orthodoxy. If you really believe the gospel, if you really believe, I can't make it by myself then the first scaffolding of your life, the first step of leadership is humility. It's, I can't do it by myself. I cannot make it by myself. I'm so sick of proud Christians I could spit. I mean, I could just spit. If I hear one more person go, well, in my opinion, I want to go, you know what? I don't stink and want your opinion. I could give two hoots about your opinion. Let me tell you whose opinion I want to live my life by. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It is Jesus. I feel like our culture says everybody's opinion matters. And I'm like, it does. It matters about as much as the newspapers I put in my dog's kennel. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what paper matters. It's this holy writ. It's what Jesus says. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.